This is Dr. Paul Herikoff presenting our technique on all-inside tibial tunnel drilling, how to calculate a safe drilling length to avoid anterior cortex violation. The Arthrex Retroconstruction Drill Guide has a 7mm step tip designed to prevent the surgeon from retro-drilling through the cortex of the tibia. At steeper drill guide angles, however, this guide may not protect the surgeon from retro-drilling through the cortex of the tibia. To prevent this complication, we've determined a trigonometric formula which allows the surgeon to calculate a safe tibial tunnel drilling length. First step is to calculate the posterior tibial slope. The second step is to orient the intraarticular arm of the tibial drill guide parallel with the tibial plateau in the sagittal plane and perpendicular with the anterior medial cortex of the tibia in the axial plane. The third step is to determine the radius of the tibial tunnel by dividing the diameter of the planned tibial tunnel by two. Step four is to record the tibial drill guide angle and the total drill bit length off of the tibial drill guide. Now we're going to generate our trigonometric formula. This is our tibial slope. Considering the triangle ABC, we can determine that the gamma angle is equal to 90 degrees minus the tibial slope. Beta angle is the tibial drill guide angle. Considering that the internal angles of a triangle measure 180 degrees, we know that the delta angle is equal to 180 degrees minus gamma angle minus beta angle. Substituting the gamma angle in from above yields the delta angle equal to 90 degrees minus beta plus alpha. Now the green line represents the total drill bit length which we've previously recorded. The blue rectangle represents the tibial tunnel of a radius r of its maximum length. D1 represents the safe drilling length for this tunnel. In order to calculate D1, we need to solve for D2. We're going to do this by focusing in on the triangle A, B1, C1. Understanding the trigonometry of a right triangle, we know that D2 is equal to the r, or the radius of the tibial tunnel, times the tangent of angle epsilon. Because this is a right triangle, epsilon is equal to 90 degrees minus the delta angle. We've previously solved for the delta angle in step 5, so we can substitute this into the formula above to calculate for epsilon. Substituting epsilon into the first equation yields our equation for D2, which is equal to R times the tangent of beta angle minus alpha angle. Finally, we want to calculate our safe drilling length. Because D1 is equal to D minus D2, and we previously solved for D2, we can therefore conclude that our safe drilling length, or D1, is equal to our total drill bit length minus the radius of the tibial tunnel times the tangent of the tibial drill guide angle minus the tibial slope. This is a 45-year-old female with a complete tear of her anterior cruciate ligament. We draw our formula for the safe drilling length on the whiteboard, then measure the posterior tibial slope on the preoperative lateral x-ray. In this case, it measures 9 degrees. We then harvest a soft tissue quadriceps tendon graft, which sizes to 9 millimeters, yielding a radius for our tibial tunnel of 4.5 millimeters. We now position our tibial drill guide parallel with the tibial plateau in the sagittal plane and perpendicular with the anterior medial cortex of the tibia in the axial plane. We now record our tibial drill guide angle and our drill bit length off of the tibial drill guide. Entering all these measurements into our formula yields a safe drilling length of 32.4 millimeters. We now drill our flip cutter 3 up into the ACL footprint and open it to 9 millimeters. The rubber grommet is placed all the way flush in the back of the tibial drill guide as seen in picture B, and we then retro drill to our safe drilling length as seen in picture C. This yields a very nice closed tuck at tibial tunnel as seen in picture D. Finally, we pass our ACL graft up into the knee and tension the graft with the knee in full extension. 